All right, thank you so much, and welcome again to the fifth annual Prison Education Conference. My name is Jessica Fletcher. You can call me Jess if you need to wave me down, and I will be your host for this conference. I am the Prison Education Awareness Club president, and I am also one of the event organizers. Our conference is being filmed and photo photographed, so please make sure that you signed a photo release form when you entered. And you, if you haven't done so already, just go ahead and fill one of those out there on a registration table outside, and you can just leave it there or on the table. And if you do uh, not wish to be photographed, just let one of us know as well. Since this is a Saturday, we have free ASU lots, so we ask that you make sure that your parking has covered beforehand. If you have any questions, you can ask me again afterwards. We are trying to use some social media, so if you are on your phones, you are welcome to take pictures and tweet at us. We are um, at peace uh, underscore ASU, so it's a capital P-E-A-C underscore ASU, and you can use the hashtag uh, P-E-A-C 16. Inside your folders, you also have a half sheet evaluation form. So we're going to have everybody fill those out at the very end of the conference. But if you're going to be leaving early for some reason, please go ahead and fill that out and drop it off at your table or again on the registration table. So that concludes all the housekeeping and the nitty gritty comments. Um, I want to get into the heart of why we're doing this, an overview of the club. And again, just thank a few of our guests. Um, and then after that, I'm going to turn the time over to have two brief uh, forwards from some of our other conference organizers. So the Prison Education Awareness Club, also known as PEACE, started five years ago. And it's funny for me to say that because now this is my fourth and final year of undergrad and I've been able to be part of this for those four years. It started with a group of interns, part of the PEN Project, which is an anonymous internship where undergrads are able to critique inmate writing from different correctional facilities. And those interns, while they were learning about prison education and writing these really phenomenal critiques to these strangers from sometimes miles and miles away and decided we care about this and let's do something more and when they did that they created this club and so that club started off with having an annual conference in a tiny little room in an English floor lounge and it was piling out with people and so they decided okay we need to make this a big thing because people really do care and so thus peace was born I um really am grateful for this club because we've been able to do these conferences, which is wonderful. It's great to have the university support and to have a time to sit aside and talk about these things and wear nice clothes. But at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, we really are, these students are the ones that are in the trenches. These are the ones that are going down to the prison and are working very, very hard to try to deliver education and opportunities to people who have most likely have been passed by. I um, want to thank the traveling speakers for coming here. Our large number of ASU faculty, students, our ADC fan, um, uh, members, and then of course just any other community members that decided to stop by and see we're curious. Um, additionally, I would like to thank our sponsors and partners, the English Department, the College of Global Arts and Sciences, uh, USG, which is our undergraduate student government, and of course, again, our Peace Clubs. I get to be the face of peace often just by being one of the officers, but I don't do this alone and I'm very grateful that I do not. Um, I really am so, so lucky that I have a fabulous team of officers who are with me every step of the way. And so I would like to thank them as well. If you can all please stand up, that will be Virginia Galetti, Nat Valen, we have MC, Madeline, are they around? All right, and you can just give them a hand because they're wonderful. All right, and now I'm going to turn the time over to our English department chair, Mark Lucier. Well, the problem is that I can't do my welcome and see you at the same time, so uh, uh, I'll see you briefly, and then I'll see you later, okay? Um, <laughs> so uh, what I'd like to do today, <laughs> sorry, uh, um, is uh, mainly because it's a, it's a serious subject that always actually, interestingly enough, uh, fills me with a great deal of gladness. Um, uh, so first, before I go further, I'd like to welcome uh, our collaborators and colleagues uh, from the Arizona uh, Department of Corrections. Uh, uh, thank you for allowing us uh, to work in this way. 
as well, I, uh, we also have collaborators uh, in New Mexico. So I'd like to thank those colleagues from the New Mexico Correction Department, Corrections Department. Uh, both these groups, by the way, are on the program today, so you'll be hearing other things from them as well. Uh, and I'd like to welcome those in the community with an abiding interest in how education can address issues of incarceration um, and help uh, and help uh, ameliorate their deadening effects through con concerned and really concentrated efforts by individuals both within and without those institutions. So welcome all. Uh, short introduction. Although the English department is currently engaged in large-scale research projects at the national and international level, I mean, we are, we're currently working to redesign doctoral education through a grant from the Modern Language Association and the Andrew Mellon Foundation. Um, and we're also helping to uh, train and educate and prepare for, uh, uh, you know, their labors, uh, women teachers, uh, uh, in Pakistan through a, a State Department grant. This program, now we're doing all of them, but this program and its work is to me the most important task we have ever undertaken. Since the skills and talents associated with our interwoven disciplines, uh, I'm thinking not just English, but English linguistics, and then when you move outward, all the varied uh, courses and programs that are now uh, part of this, uh, of this great enterprise. Um, it's those uh, uh, talents, skills and talents that are associated with these disciplines that provide vehicles for, as I was saying earlier, Michelle, for coping and therefore for hoping. Uh, I study poetry, so I, I won't kill you with it today, but if you want to be bored to tears, come by my office ne next week. Um, uh, but my favorite poet, uh, Percy Shelley, says it this way, right at the end of what I think is his greatest uh, work. To suffer woes which hope thinks infinite. To forgive wrong, uh, wrongs darker than death or night. To defy power which seems omnipotent to love and bear till hope and to hope till hope creates from its own wreck the thing it contemplates. Uh, I'm a creature of hope uh, and I'm a creature of, uh, of the transformative power of communication, opening ourselves to each other working for the needs of others before our own selves. Now the mind has, power to over, uh, has the power over such transformations and the types of education, uh, educational opportunities now available to our constituent students, both those incarcerated and those working within those structures because of course one of the things that's interesting is that uh, as in some of the stories uh, uh, included here, uh, the guards were interested in actually some of this education as well, um, and, and I admire that. And so let me just briefly close uh, by offering two quick examples of, uh, of the material object that's, that reflects on all that the students, all the people that organize, everybody that helps fund, uh, uh, what that's all about. I am a creature of poetry, so I, of course I selected the poetry, not the fiction or the nonfiction, so forgive me. Uh, this is from Joshua Martinez. I am a mirror to those who lack the ability to self-reflect, a voice to those without words, a visionary for ones who can't see, guidance for the blind and unaware, a flame that lights the way through the dark paths of life are not divine, but experienced. A holder of knowledge to the unknown wit, to the secrets of hell on earth, victim to the shadows of sorrow, the one who can relate 
Give unto me your pain. Find comfort in my embrace. See that you are not alone, for, I, for I've seen what you have seen, felt what you have felt, been where you have been, for I am your unconscious mind, the enabler of your conscience, which brings forth the skills at bay to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves to shine a light on the forgotten, to give forth the lost souls. Come to me and embrace the comforts and the sorrows of the unconscious mind, for I alone will show the way. I've studied poetry for almost 40 years. I'd place Joshua's poem up there with among the most powerful that I've read in probably the last 10 years. I'll close. Uh, with uh, a few short stanzas from uh, uh, from Michelle, who comes to us from uh, New Mexico. Uh, it's been a great delight to get to know everybody who works in this program. Uh, and Michelle, as you know, uh, that that very much includes you. And so this is from her poem that uh, is, I believe, the last poem. It's actually the last uh, work in the volume and just a few short uh, stanzas. Once upon a time, I opened my mouth to respond, and out came the horror of dead, empty space, though I was full of stars. The lesson was there all along. In the story of your life, I devoured your fire. But that is never enough. We must learn our own language, endure the agony of teaching ourselves to speak we must earn our right to burn. I have become that superb meteor, my once sleepy atoms ablaze in magnificent glow. I wanted you to know that I have used my time. The students put this together. The students are the driving force of this. And so Natalie and Bridget, thank you. And Jessica, I mean, you know, it's, we've worked ever since the beginning together on this. Uh, and, uh, and it's been a singular delight uh, uh, to do that, um, especially given all these awards you're getting all of a sudden. I just don't know what to think about that. You know, it's like, you know, you should hang out with higher people more often, I suppose. So, uh, you know, thank you. Uh, and, more than anything else, thank you, Corey. Corey Wells, I'm, Corey, would you stand up, please? <laughs> uh, Corey works too long, she works too much, uh, she does everything, she coordinates everything, um, she worries about everything, and it all comes out just right. Uh, and so this is the reason why it's my favorite program. It helps people and it shows the public our highest ideals and our best side. So welcome everybody and I would say let's get to work now. All right. All right, thank you so much Mark again. Um, and I want to comment just a little bit on that, uh, that uh, beautiful literary journal. So that was a thesis project by one of our officers, Nat Volin, and so she created this um, journal and we were able to have submissions from uh, incarcerated writers as well as uh, people who are involved in the community for helping people who are incarcerated. So that is that. And if you want to learn more about it, you can ask her about that as well. And we have a beautiful display copy on the registration table. So I'm going to just um, mirror a little bit about what Mark said about Corey Wells, who is our Prison Education Programs Director for the uh, for ASU and for the um, in English Department. And she has been a phenomenal uh, advisor and just a mentor for me and for all of us in peace. And so we're so grateful for everything she's done. And so I'd like to call you up to the stage now to have your foreword. Thank you, Corey Wells. Thank you. I began my association um, with uh, 
prison education with the Penn Project, which we, you'll hear more about later today when Michelle Ribeiro talks. She created it. Um, I was blessed to come on board in its second year. I was able to, as a result of that, became um, the faculty advisor for Peace. Uh, and that is how I got involved with the planning of conferences. The first conference was not mine. It did have about 40 people attending, um, and then it doubled in size and then doubled again, and, and we're very pleased with, with the conference and the way it's progressed. Jess, Jessica talked about the ways that uh, how the peace, how peace and this conference were born. And the first year, which was its second, that I was involved with it, it became a second full-time job for several months. It was almost overwhelming for me as a faculty advisor. The next year, for me, it was about a half-time job. The next year, um, you know, maybe, maybe a, tw maybe maybe a 10 hour, no, it was still more, it was more like a half-time job. <laughs> but this year, this year, we are no longer just born. We are not toddlers. Uh, as a club, this club is, is, is amazing. It runs on its own power, thanks in large part to Jess's leadership. She has been with the club since her first year on campus. I had her in a class the first semester, her first semester on campus. I was really lucky and um, grabbed her, and, and she was willing to come into um, the Penn Project, and she has been an amazing leader. She's a natural leader. She's a great leader. And um, I really have been just an advisor this year in terms of this conference. So I, I can't even feel, I, don't, I didn't take that much of a role with what's going on today. Um, I, did ha I, did, I did work really hard, though, uh, with Nat on her thesis. I will tell you that. We, uh, we did everything from line edit to, uh, you know, do artwork. And it was a pleasure to do. It is our inaugural, inaugural edition. And I just wanted to say that the first piece of poetry that Mark read was by an incarcerated writer in New Mexico. And those, it is, the book is mostly incarcerated writing. It is now also online at ironcitymagazine.org. You may see it there. You may buy copies. You may order copies. Um, and uh, we look for, we have writers who are incarcerated from, in it from New York, from um, California, New Mexico. We have other contributors from other places, but we're really pleased with it, and we look forward to its growth as well. So um, Jessica and uh, Natalie are graduating, and I feel as if I'm losing my two right arms, leaving me the one-armed wallpaper hanger. Um, but I'm getting three new right arms next year, and <laughs> I'm really happy. Uh, and, and they're all here today, Madeline and Vamsey, and, and of course, Bridget Nicoletti. So um, who uh, should, should be touted in her own right this summer. She's going uh, abroad on a special scholarship to uh, study have five or six countries. Five countries, she's going different countries with different juvenile justice systems, and she'll be studying juvenile justice around the world this summer. So, you know, and, and which brings me to my last point. As I was looking back on programs that we, our programs over the years for this conference, I, I noticed that this year's conference has a theme. There are several themes, you know, about youth and, you know, and reentry and transitions. And I thought, what was our theme in the other years? And then I thought, oh, it was prison education. And the fact that prison education can now have themes is amazing by itself to me. I think it's becoming a larger topic nationwide. And I think that's critical and important. And uh, awareness starts, I mean, more public, more of the public is aware of prison education issues than ever before as well. So um, Jessica, come back to ASU next year. <laughs> She's been accepted to our grad, one of our grad programs, and um, as well as elsewhere. So we're, we're uh, Mark and I are doing our best to make sure she chooses ASU, but we'll see how that works out. Okay, so uh, we hope it works out that way. But actually, we just want her to be happy. But slightly more, I want you to stay here. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, and we will continue. Thank you.